The decade of the 90s began just like the preceding 10 years, with the EKU Colonels winning OVC championships and going to the 1AA playoffs. EKU suffered one of its most decimating injuries in school history in the first season of the decade in 1990, when quarterback Lorenzo Fields was horse-collared from behind and broke his ankle in a 55-17 win over Tennessee State. Despite winning its first 10 games of the season and being ranked number one during the last part of the season, the injury was too much to recover from as Eastern was eliminated in the first round by Furman. The 1991 season began with Eastern losing a 24-14 decision at the University of Louisville before the Colonels swept through the OVC schedule in unbeaten fashion and headed into the playoffs with a 10-game winning streak. In a semifinal playoff game, highlighted by defense from both teams, Eastern fell short against Marshall, 14-7. The 1992 season marked the end of a fabulous four-year career for tailback Marcus Thomas as he closed with a school record 5,552 yards and 52 rushing touchdowns as he led Eastern to two conference titles and four playoff appearances while a colonel. The 1993-94 seasons produced conference championships for the Colonels as Eastern had back-to-back -back undefeated seasons in conference play. Eastern also participated in the playoffs both seasons, losing a squeaker to Georgia Southern 14-12 in 93 and being eliminated in 1994 in the second round by Youngstown State 18-15 after quarterback John Saka had rallied the Colonels to the lead in the fourth quarter. Tommy Luganville took the quarterback reins in 1995 as Eastern finished 9-3 and advanced to the 1AA playoffs before losing at Montana in the first round. The Colonels won one more league championship in the decade, taking the crown in 1997 as quarterback Simon Fuentes, wideout Rondell Menendez, and tailback Derek Logan provided most of the offense. One of the most notable feats of the decade ended in the playoff loss at Western Kentucky when Fuentes saw his streak of 174 passes of not being intercepted come to a close. The past 10 years have produced many exciting moments for Colonel football fans, including a streak of winning seasons, Coach Roy Kidd's 300th collegiate coaching victory, and two changes at the helm for the Colonels. After the 2002 season, legendary head coach Roy Kidd retired from leading the Eastern program for the past 39 years. The following June, coach Roy Kidd was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. He retired as the sixth all-time winningest coach in NCAA Division I or 1AA history, compiling a 315, 123, and 8 record. He led the Colonels to 16 Ohio Valley Conference titles and 17 NCAA Division I-AA playoff appearances. Under his direction, EKU appeared in four consecutive NCAA Division I-AA National Championship contests, winning the 1979 and 1982 national titles. We, we knew Coach Kidd was a good man because he was fair. Uh, it didn't matter where you were coming from. Uh, at that time, we were going through segregation. We were coming out of segregation. And one of the questions that you would ask yourself is, he going to give me an honest chance to play? And Coach Kidd stood up one day and said, I don't care who you are. If you can go out there and make plays, I'm going to play you. And he did that. And when we were on the road in the South playing, they used to give Coach Kidd a hard time. Of course, he never paid any attention to it. He said, the way you shut them up is on the scoreboard. And, and of course, we, we would go out and do that. I think I knew Roy Kidd was special when he was my freshman high school uh, general science teacher. You know, he got a lot out of those, uh, you know, out of, the, out of a very small number uh, of high school boys. Uh, so when he had the opportunity to, to move to the larger stage, I, you know, I wasn't surprised at all uh, with the success that he had. 
Replacing Kit in 2003 was former Colonel football player Danny Hope, who was a member of the 1979 National Championship team. In his five seasons at the helm, Eastern went 35 and 22, which included his best year in 2007, when the Colonels went 9-3 overall, were undefeated in conference play, and reeled off eight straight victories before losing in the first round of the 1AA playoffs. The highlight of Hope's five seasons was the undefeated OVC season in 2007 that led to Eastern's 19th conference crown. Eastern's third head coach of the decade, Dean Hood, a former defensive coordinator for the Colonels in the 90s, wasted little time in making his mark as he directed the Colonels to a 9-3 season, Eastern's 20th OVC title, and an appearance in the football subdivision series playoffs. Senior safety Brandon Gadoff's block of a would-be game-winning field goal at UT Martin preserved Eastern's 33-31 victory over the Skyhawks, sending the Colonels back to the University of Richmond for a first-round matchup with the eventual national champion Spiders. 36 seasons of excellence going into the 2009 schedule, and Eastern has not been below the 500 mark in a single season. A remarkable accomplishment that no NCAA team can match in current football annals. I'm so glad that I came to Eastern and I mean, the fellowships and the teachers and the coaches that we had, it's just a fellowship group. And uh, I don't think I would have been happy at any other place. I feel so honored to, to be a part of this, uh, to be a part of Coach Kidd, uh, to be a part of not only Coach Kidd, but his family and President Martin and, and uh, President Powell and the other presidents that have been, and, and all of the guys that I played with and all of the guys that I coached. It's been a lot of players to come through Eastern Kentucky University. And I think the fact that we've had sons of former players back here. Uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, John Jackson's son on the, uh, on the current team, for, for example. We had Mark Willoughby's uh, son back, and, and there have been, been others. I think that's the testimony that, you know, a remarkable testimony that uh, you want your son to play for the man who coached you. Now, this was my school, my alma mater, and I, when I took this job, I wanted to make people, I wanted to make our students, our faculty, and all of our alums proud of EKU as I was. That was my goal. Mm -hmm.